Hi, everybody. Welcome to this month's uh, Second Step Educator Spotlight. Uh, my name is Matt Pearsall. I am the community and uh, and community manager and social media manager for the Second Step programs, and I am very excited to get a chance to bring you uh, another real educator who is doing real work to support, uh, to empower their students with the skills skills for life uh, on the ground. Uh, one of my favorite things I get to talk to, to have these conversations, and uh, I'm really excited to do this, this one right now. We're going to get a chance to meet Mike Betts. Uh, Mike is school counselor at Manzanita Elementary in Reading School District in California. Um, and he's been doing, sec he's been implementing Second Step for, for a year-ish now. Yeah. All right, so yeah. Get, get to hear about his work. Um, but before we get started, uh, I would like to do a land acknowledgement. Uh, Committee for Children's offices sit on the unceded traditional lands of the Coast Salish people, specifically the first people of Seattle, Washington, the Duwamish tribe. As we honor the Duwamish people and their ancestors, it's also important that we consider our place in the past, present, and future history of the indigenous peoples of our region, as well as how we can best support them. Thank you. So that, Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, so I want to jump right in and kind of find out a little bit more about uh, you and the work you're doing. Um, how did you become a social emotional learning educator? Was there a point where you're like, oh, this is something I'm doing, or it's something that's really important, or something that I really want to champion? Uh, you know, there was a point where I swore that I'd never do it. Um, I was, a, I'm, a, I'm a teacher's kid. So I, I essentially grew up like, hey, I, I'm not going to be a teacher. Um, I love it. It's exciting. And I, I just saw that she poured so much into it. And she's amazing. And um, and then, of course, my like first job was working after school program and immediately started working in schools because that's how it happens. Um, and uh, like first career, behavioral psychology, early, early, early interventions, zero to five year olds. Um, and just kind of kept going with school. So my graduate was um, school psychology. And the more I got into it, the more I realized that um, what was needed for the students was much more than just what we know, what, you know, MTSS model would call tier three and that reactive and that responsive support for students. And for those who are showing with the greatest need, um, there's a lot more that's needed prior to that, the kind of what I'd call the fire prevention side of it and, and building in those skills. And that's where I started working, you know, got on Google and looked around and just whatever I could find, whatever resources were there. It's, it's the kind of thing that is touched on in your schooling, but it's not, you know, a primary focus. Um, and so it was really neat to just see the wealth of stuff that did exist. And, and of course, second steps, the, the first thing that shows up is you start that Google search. <laughs> is that how you found out about second step is through, is through just kind of coming across it on the internet? You know, I, I, yes and no, um, either coming across on the internet. Um, it could have been just the fact that half the classrooms at my school had, you know, the box of second step sitting somewhere mm -hmm. in their room. Um, and so it was like, you know, let's dig into this stuff and see what is there and what does exist. Cool. So what is something that you're working on right now that you're really excited about to support your students? Um, a couple things. Uh, specific to second step, we are, we're going through just the, the standard digital format, which side note, that's fantastic. It is so usable, so accessible. Um, I do uh, about 23 classroom lessons each week. And 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 they are um, like back to back five minutes between them. Um, and they go, I literally today I had uh, TK, transitional kindergartner students, and then fifth grade back to back. So to be able to just <laughs> come in and <laughs> click on the board and, and I'm in there, you know, there's there's minimal prep, it exists, but it's, it's really absolutely doable. So that's been um, awesome. So what I'm excited about is just as we're making our way through the program and seeing the changes in the kids, it's been really cool. I was not at this site last year, so I don't necessarily have an exact comparison, but I get a lot of the anecdotal from teachers and oh my goodness, you know, things are changing. The kids have been so kind and, and I'm hearing them use these skills they're talking about, um, you know, they're, they're using the vocabulary. We also use um, Kelso Choice, Kelso's Choices, which is a conflict resolution program. It's really cool. Um, and, and the kids also have just taken to that. So between the second step and Kelso's stuff, I get emails from parents and or I'll just run into people in the public that they're like, hey, my kid came home and they said this thing. And it's just like straight from one of our lessons. And so it's really awesome to see the kids using it. Um, I have a friend of mine whose kid is at the site and he told me that 
uh, his kid had said these certain things so many times that he now <laughs> catches himself using those things as a mantra as well. Um, so, I mean, it it's having an impact, I guess I'd say like kind of anecdotally, but also quantifiably. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing differences in our referrals that are happening. Um, grades, it's a little early in the year to, to compare, plus coming on the heels of some of the stuff that's happened, it's sort of apples and oranges to compare this year to previous years, but, but we're seeing some changes and it is really neat breath. Um, now other stuff that I'm excited, that's not specifically second step. Um, we just, just, I got the, okay, moving into next year because I spend so much time doing tier one admittedly, I'm not hitting that tier two, you know, small group type stuff as much as I could be. And so moving into next year, we're going to have a counseling aid. And so between me and I'm so stoked and she's an amazing human being. So, um, I'm really stoked about that. Cause that means that we'll be able to kind of, um, share that a bit. And I have some of my teachers too, that, um, every one of my teachers is in every one of the lessons. So they've seen it. And a few have said, Hey, like, I would love to take this on next year and do these in my room, which through a lot of the second step literature, that that's kind of the goal too, is to have the teachers presenting the lesson. So it's all really lining up to where we have a solid foundation of tier one. They've seen it. They understand why they've watched me stand up in front of them and do it over and over. I think I just added it up. It's 417 lessons that have happened so far this year. And so they, they watched it, they get it, they see it. Um, and so there are some that are saying, yeah, I'll absolutely do this. So I get to kind of hit all three of those tiers, you know, that tier one, everybody, tier two is those small groups, those slightly higher needs. And then that still actually leaves some space for the tier three when, when, you know, we need immediate triage support for kids. So it's awesome. I'm stoked about that. Another geeky one uh, is uh, I've got a, a group of after school students try, trying to fit in that tier two. Um I had a group of kids who all kind of clocked pretty high for um, anxiety type concerns. Um, and so we started up a, a small group for them. And one of the kids had actually said, can we do this after school? Because it would be really awkward to be pulled from class. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like that is the population that we're, that's the group that I'm doing with that anxiety. So totally. Mm -hmm. So um, I stay late one day a week, we do it, we hang out and it's fun um, and I have kind of a program that we're using with little pre-made and, and neat, but the magic of it is just these, these kids getting to talk to each other. I had a, a little core group of introverts who could, I mean, they barely spoke the first day and now I, I can't get them to stop talking. They're, they're doing literally cartwheels down the main hallway. Um, so it's just been really rad, but the, the, the geeky thing I was saying, um, I started pulling out more and more board games mm. and they love it um uh, there's there's a a group uh, peaceful kingdom they, they make a lot of board games that are intentionally collaborative and these kids are just eating it up i like my my kind of thought with it is you know if if kids learn best through play and all we play are competitive win lose type games like what are we what are we teaching them mm. so um pulling these collaborative ones has been really fun um I reached out to a, a nonprofit, a Tabletop Alliance, I think was their name. Yes. And and they actually sent us some board games that I think really they're designed for like a Dungeons and Dragons type, you know, club. And they said, hey, your kids are younger than what you're used to, that, that what we usually do. What are some ideas? So it's been really cool getting to collaborate with that. And so that, that's me geeking out. But yeah, that's really it's, cool. been, it's I mean, been really neat. Like yeah. I, I'm genuinely happy and excited about that stuff. That's awesome. You know, I think I've heard that like like the story of like the gaming club and things like that. It, it's 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 really cool to hear about that and like creating the, it's 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 awesome that you're able to create a space and an opportunity for these kids to sort of kind of kind of feel safe enough to to come out of their shell a little bit. Yeah, it's been great. I like I really I enjoyed so each time that like that specific group, each time we meet, we start with like, okay, here are these very targeted, you know, skills that you can use for, you know, mindfulness, relaxation. It really is hitting that that exact need of the anxiety stuff. And then we play games together. Mm -hmm. Um and it's it's been a blast. I have I have a question for you about yeah. about your second geeky thing. Yes. It's about your your counseling aid. Um yes. so this is a tough time for, for school staffing at the moment. There's budgets are pretty tight in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. um, is the, is, is, was your ability to, 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 
to advocate for and get get uh, budgeted for have, have an aid next year based on the work that you're doing right now? Somewhat. Um, thankfully, my my admin all the way through my district, they're, they're awesome. And they, they really are. And they, they, without me really needing to push and advocate, um, it was just a quick, easy decision. Like, Hey, we, they, uh, my, my principal has seen just how much is going on and how much we're doing and how constantly busy. Um, and also just very open with her about like, like, I, I feel like I'm missing some of these, these gaps within here. And, um, so that was like, hey, what if we, what if we brought on an aide who could support with that? Um, and even bigger than that has been this conversation of, you know, uh, fire prevention versus fire suppression, and mm -hmm. and you know, let's make sure that when we do have somebody, that she also is working in the antecedent of the behaviors. And this, that's that's a, the the behavior background of me. But you know, I always look at it and you know, antecedent behavior consequence, and and as the counseling side of things and SEL, and can we keep that living over in the antecedent? Um, you know, with some understanding that there will be something that has to happen post behavior every now and then. But the more we do here, you know, it's it's a um, I don't know if you know the reference, but like, I love Lucy. There's a scene on the conveyor belt and she's trying yes. to eat the chocolates, you know, working on this side is the only way that we can slow down that conveyor belt. And so those have been some of the conversations throughout the year. And so she's totally on board. Like, yes, let's, let's get that aid and let's, let's let her work on this side as well, realistically, as much as possible. You know, when, when things do happen, of course, I carry a radio with me all day, you know, just in case, but to know that we can to know that we can meet those uh, kind of additional needs that are there, it was not a hard sell at all. I think it was actually probably my principal's idea before it was mine. Well, that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, got just one last question for you. Yeah. Um, and that's, so there's a lot of educators who are, who are out there using Second Step, doing social emotional learning, who are interested in doing a lot of the same work that you're doing right now. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of them might be just starting with the second step program, just like you're starting with it. Um, what is some advice that you have for educators who are looking to bring social emotional learning into their practices or, or improve the, the, the way that they're doing social emotional learning? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think it, it kind of goes two ways. There's, um, I, I am a huge believer. My Even my like cheesy email tag has always been, you have to Maslow before you can bloom, you know, and, and and to meet these needs of of students and educators um, before we really try to hit this higher learning stuff. Um, so integrate it as much as you can, especially if you're starting now. You know, fit what you're able to, pull some lessons here and there if you know that there are specific things that you want to work on. Um, and know that for right now, because we're we're pretty far into the school year, there's a lot you can do, but don't try to, you know, get your way through, you know, five units of something like second step in the last, you know, quarter of the school year. Um, so pull what you need at this point. Um, integrate what you can. Beyond that, though, and this has kind of been one of my soapboxes, is you really do want to have, I guess I'd call it like explicit SEL. You want to have that time that's carved out. Um, it's kind of the difference between having a language rich environment and teaching language arts. Both are profoundly important and you're going to learn best if you have both of them. So with that now, like right now, do what you can and start those conversations, start planting the seeds, what it is, why it is, and what is the benefit from it. Second step on your site, and you have a ton of research behind it that you can pull and you're massive. I think it's 11 or 13% increases in academics, attendance, pull those numbers, reach out to other sites, maybe in your district or your area that are doing it successfully. Um, and, and that success becomes part of the conversation. The reality is, um, there, there's a financial cost to me being in the rooms doing these lessons. I'm not doing something else. And so I really had to be able to come and say, okay, this is what and why. And again, my admin is, they're rad and they're like, oh yeah, absolutely. Let's do this. Um, so going into next year, plan what you can now already. And um, another cheesy phrase, but there's that, you know, SEL is not a, a, one more thing on the plate. It, it is the plate. Um, so start building it now. Um, and plan it into the schedules. 
it's hard to fit that in there when we've got testing and everything else happening. I fully get that, but set it aside. Even if it's just 30 minutes a week, set that time aside so that you know that it happens. I can tell you it's for a lot of us, it's the most enjoyable 30 minutes of the week. You are hanging out with the kids and just getting to know them and talking about life stuff. Um, they love it. It's really cool. And it, it, um, it pays itself out in time and behaviors and everything else just tenfold. So uh, there was a lot of rambling. I think I answered no, it. No, I think that was really awesome. I appreciate Thank that. You. Yeah. Um, Mike, it has been awesome to get a chance to sit down and talk with you today. Uh, really appreciated hearing about your work and all the stuff that you're doing. Awesome. I really appreciate having me on here. This is really fun. And so I want to let everybody know that uh, if you would like to continue conversations like this, you can, um, get to meet people like Mike. Uh, if you are a member of our community and you're watching it there already, you know about this. But if you don't, I encourage you to join our Second Step Educator community on Facebook, um, where we can have we can educators are connecting with each other and having conversations like this all the time uh, around how to use Second Step, how to teach social emotional learning. If you're not a member, we would love to have you join. Um, and with that, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. And we'll be back next month with another spotlight of another fantastic Second Step educator. So uh, everybody have a good night and uh, we'll see you then.